Canada and specifically, this is an entry in our post-American series about what happens in the world where the United States become less interested in really everything. Now Canada has three major problems. The first one, immigration. Now this is the most pro-immigration country in the world because they face a German or an Italian or Korean style demographic decline and collapse. As recently as 20 years ago, but unlike the Germans or the Italians or the Koreans, they decide to reach toward immigration as a way to address it. And so over the course of the next 15 years, they brought in something of sense like 4 million migrants, more than 10% of population, with most of them being under age 35. So unlike the immigration diet that had been on before, where everyone comes in, they are 50 and they retire and the Canadians never get more money out of them in taxes. And then the paid and services for, for pension. Those are people who are going to pay into the system and contribute as worker and consumer for decades before they become a liberty. And that has changed the demographic of Canada because they are bringing in places who have already been taught primary and secondary education and are ready to work and spend and pay taxes. So it's kind of the best of all deals from a demographic point of view. The complication, of course, it, it's that those are people who are coming from places they don't intend to to return to and so they have to have place to live and if you have to have a place to live you will pay whatever you have to have to eat and and that has driven up housing costs in all of the gateway cities in Canada most notably Montreal, Vancouver and Toronto and now even reach into the secondary cities places like even Winnipeg and that's made a lot of social tension in Canada that didn't exist before. Now here near the novice sentiments that we're seeing a lot of the rest of the world because this is still Canada, but is it's not well. The second problem is income imbalance. Now this is something that has also gotten a little bit better. If you go back 15-20 years, you will be in a situation where there was only one province, Alberta, that was in effect paying for everyone. All the other provinces were egging toward mass retirement, with the Quebec, the forest alone, and the Ontarians not far behind that. And the whole compact that had allowed Canada to exist was basically that Ontario tax bases would pay for Quebec to not suck it. Well, that only worked until the Ontarians start to hit mass retirement, and that left it for the Albertans to pay for everything. And they were pretty susans up about it. Well, because of that immigration surge, suddenly there are more people in British Columbia and Ontario, and to a lesser degree, Quebec to pay for that compact, and that's brought the Canadian state a lot of wiggle room. But the third problem is one that's definitely not going to get better, and that's the United States. Now, Canada has always benefited from the fact that it is, from a population point of view, very small and hasn't forced a trade to the American mainland since the War of 1812. However, they have managed to win concession after concession out of Washington's supply because they were not all that important. So when the United States get embroiled in, like the Cuban Missile Crisis or the Berlin Wall Fiasco or the Iraq, whatever it happened to be, Canada can know where here will help you. But if in accents could get a little concession on auto part that worked throughout the Cold War and into the post-Cold War period, but when to get into the 9-11, period and it's basically Trump and Biden where the United States start to equate trade issue with national security and more directly all of a sudden Canada doesn't have anywhere to run and as the United States state step back from maintaining the world there are less things like the Berlin airlift that we care about and Canada got from being like number 23 on the American was list two like number three or four and in that sort of situation the Canadians have lost their wiggle room so good for them. The Canadians have found a way to at least manage their immigration issue and they have found a way to kind of define like of it like geopolitical navigation. Their internal ambulances but that's coming at the cost of a much harsher, more direct, more bare knuckle relationship with the United States because the United States that is really only concerned with North America. Most but more of its attention toward Canada. And since the Canadians have always been a confidentially where different provinces basically set different free policy, even that makes Canada as a whole one of the most protectionist countries 
that the United States deal with on a regular basis and now we are paying attention to that and we have a lot more loves than they do in the relationship.